Hi, I'm Toby Hodges, and this is the brand new XC47. What X Yachts are claiming to be is the best blue water cruiser ever built. This XC47 only launched in early September, so that's a month ago, and it was trucked down here, rigged, and uh, yeah, it hasn't even done a boat show yet. They've already sold seven. I'm going to try and take you over the cockpit and interior. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to see it. Hopefully, we'll sail it as well, or hopefully, you're watching this having sailed it. But what is patently evident is just how much attention has gone in to the design and finish, quality and good ideas. And that is, has been born out of feedback from X Yachts past owners, particularly of their XC range. And one thing that really, really wanted and what X Yachts have stressed, they wanted to include throughout is space, space, space. And this is very much a cruising boat for X. And you can tell that from the large deep cockpit, from the, I was about to say raised saloon, but it's a raised galley nav station area, which we'll see below. But this, this raised coach roof area, which floods the interior with light, but also helps contribute to the volumes of the boat. Um, but it's also been designed and rigged to be able to sail shorthanded, to manage it from by a couple easily. And what that means is you'll notice from here, the running rigging is led from the mast base through conduits as friction free as possible through this coach roof. And I'll, I'll show you again from inside where they run, actually run through where this black line is. That's the conduits for the running rigging running aft to these clutches here. Stowage, obviously massive for a blue water cruiser. And we will have a look uh, in this locker here because this <laughs> shows you for a start just how much you get in the cockpit alone. I mean, this is a proper lazarette that goes completely beam wide. And I know you're probably thinking the same as I did, well, is this the tender locker? But it's not, because they've come up with an ingenious, I say ingenious, whether it works or not, but a davit system that looks pretty clever. Uh, access to the steering gear, there's your rudder quadrant. Um, steering gear on a rack and pinion system because X believe that's the most maintenance free uh, version over over wired steering and easy obviously to get in some toys folding bikes whatever you, you want to carry in this area they've also developed um, a system that helps you launch a life raft canister from here so it's on gas struts and you can and it just helps push that life raft out of this locker uh, that there is the mechanism that goes down to the dyneema that goes down to the actuators uh, that control this bathing platform so from this large aft deck bench area you can see this is the bathing platform part here the concept is that you use the bathing platform to hinge the dinghy down into the water because uh, that lowers down that lowers the bathing platform down and I will show you on the graphics here just how that works so they've, so they've done this you can see that as the platform goes down it, it lowers these down but also how the actual davits are hinged there uh, to launch and recover the dinghy it looks quite clever. 150 kilos per davit, so a 200 kilo dinghy in total. It's pretty uh, sizable. And then because you have that huge um, deep lazarette locker, that's just a shallow cockpit locker there for lines and fenders, etc. Like your shower there, you've got your lifting helmsman plates, foot braces, push pit, quarter seats there. And then another thing you probably noticed is these locker lids each side in the 
in the cockpit benches and that's really just to give a view stroke if you want to look at the stars from your berth but ventilation into those aft into the aft cabins and again that's from feedback from past owners wanting to get a bit more natural ventilation into the aft cabins if they are in the in there especially in the mediterranean in terms of cockpit you can see it's nice deep combings here and that means you've got uh, you aft facing reclining seat but also pitched up against here so you can sit feet forward uh, looking forward in there which is quite a nice feature as well um, tailing lockers here so you push a bit of button there to release that yes it's a small opening and in terms of covering you know we're in the hot sun now in near Barcelona you can see this has got a half height spray hood option there but you can also have a fixed windscreen with a spray hood that comes here and also a bimini which covers this whole cockpit area and the helm uh, the helm area as well because it attaches here uh, and it can be left up while sailing I have asked that so for those uh, concerned about being exposed to the sun with aft helming position there is the option to fully enclose all of this with clear panels to see the sails so obviously this first boat is absolutely kitted out with every optional extra including it being a full hybrid boat with an ocean vault system on there uh, and yeah full teak decks which they do uh, they do offer flexi teak and, and I'm sure most people will go that way in the future you see here this has a furler boom on it as well um, and the traveler is mounted forward of the spray hood optional solar panels and therefore uh, just a bit of recharge on the service batteries rather than uh, uh, rather than the propulsion batteries for this one so you've got the in inboard d shrouds in the deck here but there's still good passageway through that maybe notice as well good scupper on there and a nice wide chunky tow rail on the bulwark this is a nice feature here so this is not only to get at the genoa track but you can see from what i was talking about here here's where the halyards lead under the deck through this turning block here and then they're in straight stainless steel tubes conduits through uh, the coach roof as well to those after so they've really tried to keep the friction out of there as as much as possible um, and give you access for maintenance plenty of natural ventilation through all these hatches that open no dorades but there are a couple of i'll show you from from the inside uh, vents in the side of those coach roof windows what you do get up here is a really good size sail locker which you need furling covengenica sails which can fit in there because that is really deep got a manual genoa furler on this you've got an angled bow roller to help uh, that anchor set and it's a really good chunky size bow sprit as well so this one has a powered uh, powered furler forward of the um, anchor roller so for that two-thirds height spray head you need to duck a bit to come down below go through the companionway But once you're down here, look just how much space and light there is. It's almost reminiscent really of a, an older pilot saloon design in terms of you know, having those massive coach roof windows each side and indeed forward facing coach roof window. It's just astonishing how much natural light is on here really um, and that is you know you can see straight away it's got a lot of woodwork on here a lot of oak on this boat if you can imagine with, with white bulkheads or whatever it would it would appear even even more voluminous than it already does but what immediately stands out to me is uh, the high quality of finish and the care and attention to detail into making the boat as usable and livable as possible and by that I mean 
every bit of stowage is made has been made as accessible as possible. What do I mean by that? It's, for starters, I say with a raised area like this uh, and with the volume you have in the deeper V sections and the bilges, it means you can get the tanks and batteries and that sort of thing all centralised, which opens up the amount of stowage you get below berths uh, in the cabins, in the saloon and that sort of thing. Uh, so this has, it has got a good tank, it's got 560 litres of fuel, uh, 640 litres of fuel, 500 litres of water and a water maker. The water maker is contained beneath the galley here. Uh, but just everywhere you look there is the stowage is maximized um, as well. And look, I mean just look at that straw. I've just had to move into the aft cabin so I can open, show you the full amount of that. All the drawers are on soft closing mechanisms. mechanisms. All of the big lockers that hinge up are on gas struts. Um, it's just really good throughout. A um, couple of style things to show you. So uh, you would have noticed the the very uh, unique style of the sort of hexagonal windows there, which is a, a, a feature that they've repeated on the joinery as well as the handholds, and also the three stripes there, which are you know the, the trademark of the X look on the waterline. Moving back to the stowage this raised stowage throughout the boat is going to be really valuable uh, for long-term long cruises and liverboards. Um, the whole boat they did a mock-up of in Haderslevin in a Danish yard uh, that they could that the whole interior that they could then cant to 20 degrees each side so, so they knew exactly what they were doing what they wanted to achieve so in, you know they wanted the exact ge geometries, the bracing you'd get around this galley, etc., uh, was all mocked up before they before they built the boat. Well, we're in the galley. Uh, you have 150 litre drop down refrigeration space in there, and another 130 litres in the front opening fridge, or 80 litres if you had a freezer in there as well. Nice little feature is having these. Can I do this one-handed? Yeah there and another one there so you have uh, something to stop things rattling around when you're when you're at heel small double sink there with double waste bin or well, triple actually below it in terms of layout you can have it like this which is a three cabin model or a two cabin version for which that would be a utility cabin moving forward there's more stowage below the galley here. In those four drawers, again, beneath uh, the nav station here, you get a proper chart table, little home office area, with obviously really good views up through there. So with these skylight hatches, you've got a forward opening one and a side opening one to increase your ventilation. And then that is what I'm talking about, is where the conduits of the running rigging run through this area here. It's not an integral handrail or whatever, because you have that on there. You've got a big fiddle on the side of the galley here with handhold in it uh, and handrails mounted on the sides as well. Same again on the side of this chart table. At the chart table, you've got a 45 degree panel there for your chart plotter and then your instruments, electronics mounted in behind this cupboard door. So this has two touch screens on it for the Victron system. One to show your, your systems in terms of your fuel tanks, um, lighting, water, that sort of thing. Uh, and the other one is, is showing the propulsion and battery system up there. And there, this one is on a 4G network, so you can monitor your boat from at home uh, and see if the, uh, or, or if you're just going ashore, if there's any alarms going off about it, you'd know about it. We've got the, you might be able to hear actually, we've got the aircon running on here. So say this boat has got all the options on it, got a water maker, got a washer dryer, got an got aircon, got an ocean vault, um, electric drive below the companionway. It's got a Fisher Panda 11 kilowatt DC gen set as well behind that. So at the moment I can feel some nice cool air coming out of there. 
No, I can't. Out of there, I can. Um, and you can see the setup of the saloon here. So those leaves obviously come out of there and it can be dropped down to fill in this space. And you'll also notice the thick ply cushions. So this is your comfortable reclining area, which you are unlikely to want to get up or out of too quickly. Moving into the forward cabin, you come down one more step. So that's one step down into the saloon and another. And they try to minimize this, but it helps create this, this space. I mean, that's, uh, that's almost as high as I can reach up here to see out of that forward uh, coach roof window. But it means you get, um, I don't know, seven foot plus headroom right up to the berth itself. Plenty of volume in those forward ends. And again, look how much stowage there is. All in ventilated and lit lockers. Uh, that one's got a bit more hanging space in terms of depth in it as well. And then this bank of drawers below all of that as well. And below the berth itself, huge great chest drawer. Again, that was the feedback. Make all the stowage as usable as possible. That's what I mean. It, all those raised lockers continue throughout. Loads of natural light. And then a sort of good compact size, but plenty of space been given to this has a separate shower compartment with its own door here as well. More stowage there and behind. Hello. And then yeah, another one. Anchored shelves there behind the door to the heads. Indirect lighting, soft lights, reading lights. All been done very well indeed. The aft heads area in this, uh, you have, is a bit more compact, but there is a shower screen behind this door. To close off that area and a good wet hanging locker in there as well draining below into the shower compartment. And then if you have the two aft cabins, they're basically the same. This one looks a bit lighter because it has that hatch open into the cockpit. So, I mean, that shows you the difference it makes in terms of natural light that comes into here and, and ventilation as well. Again, there's loads of headroom here, probably seven and a half foot um, to turn around and get changed in here. Good hanging locker and shelving there. More drawers below. Again, really big deep drawers on soft close mechanisms. Um, and that hull window there giving even more light. And that's the access panel into the generator, which sits behind the engine bay itself. Both these aft cabins, the berths, can you see how that's been filled in there? So it can be a twin or it can be a double. So that's set up on this side that way. This one has a massive seven kilogram washer dryer contained in that locker, which means you wouldn't obviously have any hanging stowage in here. But bear in mind, um, you don't need to have that. And there is yet more below here. So let me show you this as an example of the accessible stowage. So as I say, below the berth is all stowage and look at that, just lifts on gas struts. And you've got a good section aft, but then you've got this basket section. So that all lifts out. So you can use that top half without it going into the bilges, but there's still yet more room below it. All nicely sealed furniture as well. Good joiner work, good attention to detail, bit of ventilation in there as well. And another panel there 
to get at the uh, Fisher Panda gen set there. The whole thing removes on those buttons. Same again outboard, that lifts on gas straps, more stowage beneath there, so that's got the infit in it at the moment for that twin berth. And if you had, if you chose the two cabin option, this would be a utility cabin. So this would all be a workbench here. You'd have an extra 300 litres of fridge freezer space aft if you wanted it, a big chest freezer or something. Uh, and this would be a fold down berth um, inboard as well. So the XC47 was designed from the get-go to have, uh, to offer a hybrid propulsion as well. So below this saloon step is the Victron lithium iron phosphate battery bank. So that's giving, that's the first 30 kilowatt installation done on a production yacht, apparently. And then I've lifted here uh, the companionway steps to access uh, the, the engine bay. So the engine bay, as I say, has been designed to be either take an ocean vault electric system or, um, you know, a conventional diesel propulsion system. In this case, it would be an 80, yan, 80 horsepower Yanmar. But there's the ocean vault electric drive. Pretty neatly done. And then behind that sits the, uh, the DC generator, the FP 11 kilowatt, to help top up the battery banks. So what that means is that if you have this using that with regeneration as well, which is what the Ocean Vault with their servo prop offers, that if you're sailing at eight knots or above, you're regenerating 3000 watts into the battery bank. So you can imagine in sort of half a day of sailing in, in good trade wind conditions, you're, you would have topped up your battery bank nicely. And it's also nice and quiet. So they're saying, you know, sailing yesterday, they're testing the boat out, but even when you're uh, using propulsion, it's only it's less than 60 decibels in the galley at full speed. And that will give you a 30 nautical mile range. Um, so yeah, that's why it's after having a, a DC gen set is, is the only way really to go to top that up um, rather than a fuel cell or something at the moment, especially for a blue water boat. That said, the first uh, seven clients uh, have all chosen diesel propulsion. We just popped up this floorboard as well to help show you that that is a pretty thick looking floorboard and you'd think that would be really heavy. It's not. That's plastic honeycomb in there with plywood on the outs either side of it. Uh, so they've kept weight down wherever they can. You know, it's still an ex yacht. It still has their tried and tested steel grid in the heart of the boat, uh, and it's a you know infused epoxy boat. It uses sandwich bulkheads uh, on the main bulkhead and forward, and there's lots of carbon stiffening in this boat as well. So the yard has centralised weight wherever possible. It's minimised it, but yeah, it's still a 14 and a half ton yacht. Uh, the the extra batteries. Uh, needed for hybrid system and generation and stuff would add another couple of hundred kilos. So how does that X mark the spot on this boat? Is it the best or one of the best blue water boats built? It's pretty early to decide that, but they have done a phenomenal job here. It's clear to tell just coming on board here and looking around it for the first time, the quality of finish, the thought, the intention to detail that's gone into it. Uh, it it's a very, very impressive looking yacht. This starts at 795,000 euros. So then put in the, the hybrid system, which is basically with the extra batteries, the gen set and everything is another 120,000 euros on top of that. So with this boat, you're looking at over a million, 1.1 million expat. Uh, it's a fascinating project though. I hope you enjoyed the tour. See you next time.